Welcome to the marking training for GCSE Maths for November 2021. In this session, we're going to look at the different types of marks that we use when we're uh, marking questions. We're going to be looking at the numbers that are placed in inverted commas on our mark schemes, which is a very common feature. And thirdly, how to apply mark schemes to uh, responses to questions. The different types of marks that are used on mark schemes are detailed on the slide in front of you. They're also detailed at the front of each of our mark schemes that accompanies our live papers. So we have method marks, process marks, accuracy marks, communication marks and unconditional accuracy marks, which are generally used when there's just a one mark question but we'll explain more about these as we go through the actual mark schemes and apply them to marking questions. In general, when we're awarding marks to responses, if there isn't working specifically required in the question, then a correct, full, a correct answer will gain full marks. And if the answer isn't correct, that's when we look at the working and use the mark scheme to apply the marks as detailed in the scheme. Where working is required, and this will be indicated by the question, there may be a phrase such as, you must show how you get your answer, or show clear working, or it might be a question that requires a proof or uses the phrase, show that then the working must be present and will be marked using the, sque the, the scheme. If there is a correct answer without working, then this will score no marks. So it is important that uh, candidates read the question carefully and provide working where it is required. A common feature of our mark schemes is the use of inverted commas. And this is detailed in the general guidance at the beginning of the mark scheme in point 12. Where there are numbers in inverted commas, this means we will follow through um, a incorrect answer, but provided it's come from a correct method. And we'll give some, we'll give some examples of this later on. But it does mean that the number in inverted commas can't be just any, any number the candidate must have shown a correct method and possibly made an arithmetic error in their calculation. So we're going to look through some questions from the paper from November 2021. And we'll look at the question and the mark scheme and then some sample responses. As you'll see when all the responses appear, they're all in uh, the same handwriting but they are typical responses that we do see during live marking. We're starting off with some questions from the foundation papers and the question on the screen in front of you, question nine from paper 1F, is a typical uh, problem, the type of problems that will be appear fairly early on in the paper. The first thing to note is the question does say you must show how you get your answer. So an answer of just uh, yes or no, in fact, which is the correct answer, an answer of no by itself won't score any marks. It must be supported by correct figures. And this is made clear in the mark scheme. As you can see in the final mark, it says A1 for no with correct figures. Now, I won't go through the mark scheme in detail at this point. Um, I'll do that as we go through and look at some responses. In the second mark, we can see that there's a £6.50 in inverted commas. So this is saying that if the candidate doesn't have £6.50, if they're going to add up all the costs and subtract from 10, then they must have actually attempted to add all the costs and made an arithmetic error. If, for example, they just added two of the costs, then they wouldn't be in line for this second mark. In the additional guidance, there are always some notes which um, adds to the understanding of the mark scheme. So in this case, we're told that candidates could work in pounds or pence and that 
if they add up two lots of £2.30, so they realise there's two packets of cheese, that counts as two costs, even though they're the, the same cost, as it were. So we have four um, responses here, and we can see that three of them say wrong or no, or Daniel is not right, or words to, to that effect. Um, so three of them on the surface look as if they could have the right answer. Uh, one response hasn't got any decision at all, so that certainly isn't going to score full marks. But if we look in detail about how the mark scheme is applied, then we can see what marks each candidate would get. So looking at response A, the first mark was for, for adding some of the costs, and they've certainly done that. They've added three costs together, so they get the first uh, process mark. They can't get the second mark because they haven't got a complete method. They've missed out some of the costs. So the method in the second line of the working, the 10 minus £4.20, is not a complete method. So that mark cannot be awarded. So this is an example of where the, on the mark scheme, the 10 minus the £6.50 in inverted commas uh, can't be applied here because the number they're using in place of £6.50 has not come from a correct method. And finally, A0, A0, because the final answer isn't supported by correct figures. Moving across to response B, again, we've got three costs being added. In fact, we've got, we've got all the appropriate costs being added here. Uh, we've got uh, a correct... Um, addition, but unfortunately, the, there's an arithmetic error early on. 2 times 2.3 does not give you 4.8, but it's a correct method is the important thing to note here. So this response is showing the addition of all the appropriate costs and then subtraction from 10. So both the first two marks can be awarded. The error in the arithmetic will be penalised by the uh, loss of the final mark because the figures aren't correct. So we get P1, P1, A0 for response B. In response C, we actually do have a correct uh, figure of £9.80, but there's no conclusion. So we can award P1, P1 for getting to the £9.80. It's a fully correct method. Uh, in this case, the five figures have been added, including the possible change to show that you don't get £10. So we can award two marks, but again, not the accuracy mark because there's no decision made. We need at least to see no or something equivalent to that in order to gain full marks. And again, in response D, we've got a fully correct method. There are various ways that you can approach this question. So this time all the um, costs are subtracted individually. But again, there's an incorrect figure in there and errors being made along the way. So it's P1, P1, but A0. If we move on now to question 13, and this is from paper 2F, um, this is a fairly low level geometry question where two parts to the question. First of all, working out the uh, value of x, and then secondly, giving a reason for your answer. This particular mark scheme just shows one method, but we do see very often different methods being attempted, um, making it up into angles around a point by using the 180 degrees below the line is one way that this could be done. And of course, it could be done in two steps. You might see the 75 and the 84 added together and then subtracted from 180. But we are looking for a complete method for that first mark and the correct answer for the second. The question doesn't ask to be for working to be shown. So a correct answer of 21 with or without working would gain full marks for part uh, dotty one. Dotty two, we're looking for a reason. And when reasons are required, the mark scheme will show underlining on words that must be present. So here we can see the words that absolutely must be present are angles and line. 
this ensures that we get consistent work, consistent marking throughout the series. And it also um, takes into account parts of the phrase that may have been used in the working. So for example, here 180 isn't underlined because candidates will have used that. In the additional guidance, we see the note that there must be no incorrect reasons given. And that's just to prevent uh, a whole list of reasons being given, uh, with somebody sitting there writing down every reason they could possibly think of, and many of which wouldn't be appropriate. So looking at some responses, we can see uh, a range of different responses here. Three of them have reasons. The first one, as we'll see in a minute, doesn't have any, any reasons there. It just has some working. Uh, so if we go on to look at the marking. So in the first response, we can see a correct answer, no working, but the answer's correct. So that's fine because we weren't asked to show working. So two marks for 21 degrees. But unfortunately, in Dotty 2, there's no reason given. The response just shows the working that's been done. So no mark for the reason in response A. In response B, we've got some, the correct method. It's been done in two stages, but that's absolutely fine. Now, the candidate has shown the correct method, but they've made an arithmetic error. So again, we award M1 because the method is correct. The incorrect arithmetic is penalized by the loss of the accuracy mark, so A0 for 31. In the mark scheme, there were two words that were underlined, angles and line, but unfortunately, neither are present here. So because they add up to 180 degrees is not a sufficient reason. Um, we don't know why, what's adding up to 180 degrees or why. So no mark for the reason. Response C is showing a rather roundabout route, pretending or not pretending, um, considering angles at a point. Uh, so showing the subtraction of two lots of 84, two lots of 75, and then halving the answer. Um, the method itself is absolutely fine, uh, although long-winded. So M1 for the correct method, but A0 because we've got, um, again, an arithmetic error. So 24 degrees is the wrong answer. The two words angles and line need to be present. Unfortunately, we haven't got the word angles. Straight line is 180 degrees, isn't quite uh, correct enough. So no mark there. And over in response D, we can see the candidate here has got the same answer as the one above in B, but they've got no supporting working. So this shows the importance of supporting working because the answer of 31 degrees here is incorrect. We can't assume anything, so uh, no marks can be awarded. It is incumbent on the candidate to show their working in the event like this, they get a wrong uh, answer. In the, in the response to part two, though, we can see the words that we're looking for, angles and line. So on a line, angles add up to 180 degrees. Uh, we condone the missing word straight because that wasn't underlined in the mark scheme. So C1 for part two. Still on the foundation tier, and this is question 10 on 3F. Um, it's a question where the candidate really needs to recognise that there we, an integer answer is required for the greatest number of books. This question has three marks, and the first two marks are the process mark for dividing by 4.85. The second mark is for the answer to that. 61.8, or for those candidates who automatically round up, if we saw an answer of 62, that would also allow the award of that second mark. And then the third mark is for the correct answer of 61. There's a note in the additional guidance that we build up methods are accepted. You often see um, responses where you might try doing 20 times 4.85 and then 30 times 4.85 and so on until they get to the correct figure. So the note says that we do need to get to figures that are before or after 300. So we need to see a trial of with using either 61 
or um, 62. Embedded answers get minus one mark. This is the type of response where we might see something like um, £4.85 times 61 equals £295.85 and no further answer on the answer line. So the candidate's recognising where the limit is, but they haven't pulled out the correct answer from their working. So that's where we see embedded answers and that, that type of answer would get two marks. Some responses here, some of them are short and sweet. Um, and the marking of these is as follows. Response A, we see the correct working and the 61.85. So that gets that line of working would get uh, P1, A1. But then the, the uh, value has been rounded up rather than down for the greatest number of books. So it's A0. The second response, we can see the 300 divided by 4.85. But then there's no answer to that given. And the rounded version that is on the answer line has been rounded too far down. So we don't know why that was done. We don't know what answer they got from 300 divided by 4.85 and haven't been told. So no mark can be awarded for that answer. So it's P1, A0, and then A0 for the final answer. Again, demonstrating the importance of showing all working. Response C is fully correct. No working, but the question didn't ask for working to be shown. So full marks for 61. And the third response, false response, sorry, we've got a answer where there's a build up method. We can see the correct amount for 60 books and for 61 books. So either of those figures will get P1, A1. And the correct answer has been chosen uh, for A1. But just looking on the answer line, that alone of 61 on the answer line would get three marks. Further into the foundation papers, around about in the middle now, We've got uh, another question on that involves a lot of numeracy work. And this question is from 1F, question 14. The mark scheme looks pretty involved, but um, when we look at it in more detail, we can see the first mark is for starting to work out the cost of one kilogram of carrots. The second mark, there are two ways that you could get the second mark. One is to start with potatoes and find the cost of one kilogram of potatoes, and you would have to use your answer to uh, the cost of one kilogram of carrots, and you can see that as the 0 0.60 in inverted commas. Or for candidates who can't go down that route, don't realise how to, they can get the second mark if they work out four kilograms of carrots, because that would form part of the final answer. The third mark, they have to find both the cost of four kilograms of carrots and two kilograms of potatoes, but they may not be added together. And then the final mark is for £3.30. You'll see in the, in the answer column here and in some other of the questions as well, for the £3.30, the zero is in brackets, so an answer of £3.3 would be acceptable and 3.30. The question does ask for all working to be shown. And questions like this can be um, quite uh, tricky sometimes to work through when there's a whole mass of working all over the page, particularly on a, a non-calculator paper. The responses we see here are, are rather more ordered to make it uh, a bit easier for us to, to navigate through. And it is obviously much easier easier to mark and to see what's going on when working is clearly uh, set out. So looking at the marking of these, in response A we can clearly see the £1.80 divided by 3, so that's the first mark for working out the cost of one carrot. We don't need to see the answer of 60 because it's a method mark or a process mark. We need to just see the correct process is being carried out. The candidate then doesn't find the cost of one kilogram of potatoes, but they do work out the cost of four kilograms. So 
The way that's detailed on the screen may look a bit confusing, but they can get the second mark for working out the cost of four kilogram of carrots, which we can see in the four times 60. The reason the candidate's gone wrong in working out the cost of one kilogram of potatoes is because they've just simply subtracted one pound 80 from the, uh, the cost given in the second line of the question, rather than two lots of 60. So the errors happened there. The third mark can't be awarded, the third process mark, because there isn't a method to find a correct method, I should say, to find the correct um, cost of both four kilograms of carrots and uh, the potatoes and a naught for an incorrect answer. The second response is actually fully correct, apart from an arithmetic error in the very first line. So this is where we can see that the correct attempt was made, which was to divide £1.80 by 3. Unfortunately, the wrong value has been given there, 0 0.7 instead of 0 0.6. But it has then been used correctly. In order to find the cost of one kilogram of potatoes, the candidate has subtracted two lots of what should be 60, but we can see it's from an arithmetic error, uh, and they've then divided by 5. So we've got a correct process for one kilogram of potatoes, so we can award the second mark for that. If that hadn't been correct, we could have awarded it for the correct cost for four kilograms of carrots. We see the 70 times four. The mark for the complete process can be awarded, the third process mark, because we can see the cost of uh, four kilograms of carrots and two of potatoes. And then a naught because the final answer is incorrect. So this is where the arithm arithmetic uh, error in the very first line is penalised right at the end by losing the accuracy mark. Uh, everything, it's a very clearly set out method that's fully correct and obviously would work if we had the right answer on the very first line. Question 17 from 1F is a, a fairly typical recipe type question. Um, but this one, they're not asked how many, how much of each ingredient they need to make a, a given number of biscuits. They're asked, given these amounts of ingredients, how many biscuits can you make? And this is a question that did have a second part, but here we're just looking at the, the first part of the question. The mark scheme does look rather um, confusing because there's a, a lot there. There's a number of different ways that this question can be attempted. But in essence, the first process of mark is for working with one ingredient. The second process of mark is for working with all the ingredients and just in number of batches. The third mark is for when they uh, move on to working out the number of biscuits. And then the fourth mark is for the correct answer. So looking at responses, as I said, there were a number of ways to do this question. Um, there's also, I haven't, there's no example here, but there's also a unitary um, method as well. And let's apply the marks. So the first um, response is actually a, a fully correct method. Um, except the answer is given as 150 because they've worked out how many biscuits you can make using the all three ingredients and then added them together. So instead of picking out the limiting factor, which was the middle ingredient, they've added them all together. So they get the first three process marks, but not the final answer. They do need to even though the 42 is there, that's not sufficient to get the final mark because the candidate thinks the final answer is 150. Again, in response B, we've got three marks here. And this is an example we have actually got fully correct working. There's just an arithmetic error at the end. So very often we see building up rather than uh, division. So something like 125 times 4 is 500 rather than, as in the first response, 500 divided by 125. Um, but it's absolutely fine written as it is. All the workings there, apart from an arithmetic error at the end. So three out of the four marks for response B. 
<clears throat> Similarly, in response C, this is the candidate that builds up in numbers of batches and forgets the fact that you don't have to make a full batch. You could make one biscuit or you could make six. Um, so they're just working with the 12, 24, 36 numbers of biscuits. And on the mark, using the mark scheme, this is sufficient to get the first three marks, but they won't be able to get the final mark because they've forgotten that you can actually do three and a half times the uh, ingredients in the, um, in, the, in the middle ingredient. So we've got P1 for starting to build up, P1 for building up to three batches, and P1 to find the number of biscuits which is detailed by the 12, 24, then the 36 is the crucial one, about A naught. Finally, I started by saying we didn't have the unitary method. We have got an attempt here, but it doesn't go far enough. We've got P1 for starting off with the first ingredient and working out that you need 10.4 uh, is written down there, which doesn't look quite right. Um, but the trying to work out how much of that first ingredient you need for uh, one biscuit. They can't get the second mark because they haven't considered all the ingredients. And likewise, they can't get the third mark. On the mark scheme, it did say that the third mark was dependent on the first two. So because the only one of the first two marks was awarded, this third mark automatically can't be awarded because it's dependent on the first two. So just one mark for that fourth response. <laughs> Going on to question 18, again on 1F, this is um, a fairly standard question where we're asked to draw a graph, and we're told to draw the graph for values of x from minus 2 to 3. So we do need to see the final line going between those values of x. The mark scheme is written as a B3, so full marks. And if you don't get full marks, you could get two marks. If you don't get two marks, you could get one mark. Um, and it's um, a tried and tested mark scheme that you'll see in numbers, a number of past papers. The mark scheme focuses on the integer points because that's the way that uh, the vast majority of candidates will draw the graph by um, putting values of x in and finding values of y. Some candidates will use attempt to use y equals mx plus c with the gradient and the y-intercept, and that's also detailed in the mark scheme as well. If we look at some typical responses, they will look something like this. Uh, the other typical response is a set of random points. Uh, so the first response is where the candidate hasn't drawn the line quite long enough. So we'll look at the marking. And in the mark scheme, we can't give B3 because the line doesn't extend from the given values of X. But we can award B2 for a correct straight line segment through at least three of the given points. And the given points were the integer, the points with integer coordinates. The second, response B, is a fairly typical response where things go badly once you get to the negative values for x. So we quite frequently see this sort of v-shape. But in this uh, instance, there is a correct straight line segment that does go through at least three of the given integer points. It actually goes through four of them. And the instruction on the mark scheme is to ignore any incorrect points. So response B will also get two marks. <clears throat> response C is the sort of thing you often see where candidates are trying to use y equals mx plus c, but they fail to realize that the scale on the x-axis is different to the scale on the y-axis. So here we can see a straight line that's going through uh, negative 2 on the y-axis, which is correct. And we can see what we would regard as a clear attempt to use a gradient of two because the candidate's going one square along and two squares up, one square along and two squares up. So they've misread the scale. So this is an example that would get two points out of three. 
clearly if they'd used the correct scale and used the gradient one along two up then they would have gone on to get full marks part d is another typical response that's frequently seen where the points are plotted but then no line is drawn and again b2 is available for this if um, not all the points were there if there was three or four of the points then that would get b1 but all points are present and that's sufficient for b2 we're still on just the foundation paper and this time we've moved to the cat one of the calculator papers 2f and question 19. here we see we've got to work with fractions and most importantly is for candidates to read the question carefully because the one of the most common errors here is just to read Samina gets a quarter of the money and assume that Samina gets a quarter of 600 which is not the case obviously because it says she gets a quarter of the money that is left over so looking at the mark scheme we've got three process marks here the first process mark is for a correct process to find Rachel's share, so finding two fifths of 600. Then for a process to find Samina's share, so doing a quarter of what's left over. And the third mark here is a could be a standalone mark because it's for a process to find either of Tom's shares. So either the share when the 600 pounds is shared out between Rachel and then Samina and then Tom getting the rest or for his share if they had shared the 600 pounds equally so there are two possible ways to get that third mark and the note in the additional guidance makes it clear that this could be the only mark that's awarded if um, candidates don't attempt the rest of the question or it goes badly wrong if we just see 600 divided by three then uh, an award for this question could be P0, P0, P1. Again, we're asked to show how you get your answer. So just an answer of no wouldn't get the marks. Got two responses here, and I think we'll move straight on to looking at the marks. So we've got P1 for Rachel's share for the first one in response A for 600 divided by five, and then the multiplication by two. But P0 for Samina's share because we just see 600 divided by 4, so it's an incorrect method. We haven't subtracted um, the 241st. The third mark can't be given for the rest of the calculation to try and find Tom's share doing using that method because the 150 is an incorrect value and it's come from an incorrect process, so we can't follow that through. But we can award that third mark for the 600 divided by 3. Uh, for the alternative way of Tom's share being worked out. So P1, P0, P1, and then A0. Although they've got Tom is not correct, there's no correct figure to support that. In the second response, uh, unfortunately, the method to find Rachel's share is incorrect because there's no multiplication by two, just one fifth has been found. So we can't follow that through to, for the method to find Samina's share because the 150 has come from an incorrect process. Had the multiplication been two by two being given, then we could obviously follow that through. So the first two mark can't be awarded, but the third mark can be awarded for the 600 divided by three. And then obviously A naught because we don't have correct figures. Moving on to some common questions, uh, we've got here the uh, subtraction of two fractions. And the mark scheme here is, again, it's M2 for a complete method, but the method makes it clear that we can condone one error. Uh, sometimes you see errors in one of the numerators, so it's clear the candidate knows the correct method, but they've just made an error. And then M1, if they just do a start to a method, and A1 for the answer, which must be given as a mixed fraction as required by the question. So looking straight at the marking of these questions. The first one, we have got a complete method. 
um, when we get to the stage of two and then three fifteenths minus ten fifteenths, that's the correct method at that stage. So M2 at that stage, but then A0 because it should be two minus seven fifteenths and going on to uh, simplify that. So M2 A0 for the first response. Similarly, the second response we have here uh, got a correct answer. 23 over 15, but it isn't in the form asked for in the question, so we have A0. Part C, we've got a complete method, but there is an error in there, so we can only give uh, the method marks and not the process marks. In, in C, the 11 thirds, the second of the improper fractions, should be 8 thirds, so an error has been made um, early on, uh, but everything's been carried through correctly. And when we get to 63 over 15 minus 55 over 15, there's only one error in that method. So we get the M2 A0. In part D, we see the correct improper fractions, but then when these are subtracted, there's no change to either numerator in the second part of the working. So the mark scheme prevents the award of M2 because we don't have a complete method, but we can give M1 for the two improper fractions and A0. So just one mark for that response. Another common question, uh, again on 1F and 1H, um, question 4 on 1H, 23 on 1F. And the mark scheme here really works um, by focusing on one of the houses at a time. So you can get the first P1 for starting the process, so finding 20% or 30% of the relevant amount. Then for carrying out a correct, um, complete correct method for one of the houses. And we could see this using a scale factor in a single step, or most likely you'd see it in two steps. And the accuracy mark is for just one correct value. In order to get the final mark, you need to get two correct values and have the correct decision. And the question again says you must show how you get your answer. So here's um, some responses. And the important one to look at first is response A. This is where we see a build up method. And unfortunately, the candidate has got the wrong value for 10%. Now, I don't know why the value for 10% is wrong. I don't know if it's an error because they can't divide by 10 or because they thought they had to divide by 100. There's no indication as to why they think that's 10%. So we cannot give a mark for that, even though they've doubled it and then subtracted from 220,000. We can't give any process marks here because there's no method shown for the 10% and the value is wrong. Have they written 10% is 220,000 divided by 10 equals and then given the wrong amount, then that would be accepted because the method was correct. There was an error along the way. But as it stands, response A gets no marks. Response B, we've actually got two correct figures there, but no conclusion. So either one of those correct figures would get all three marks, but C naught because there's no conclusion. Response C, um, the figures are the same in response, as in response A, but we see a process or method. We can see the candidate knows how to work out 20% of 220,000. They've just made an error along the way so in this case, we can give P1, P1 for the complete process to um, decrease that by 20%. But then A0 as the figure is incorrect and C0 because, well, there's no decision and we haven't got two correct figures. <clears throat> so two marks for that. In part D, we've got two correct processes, either one of those would get the two first two marks. Use of scale factors is fine, it's more efficient. Uh, so P1, P1 for either of those calculations, but A0 as we haven't got any correct figures, and C0 because again, we haven't got any correct figures. Going on to 
common question calculator question uh, on 3F. And this is one that had a lot of different processes to go on, a lot of different ways to do the questions. And as a result, the mark scheme looks very confusing. I'm not going to go through it now, other than to say that in essence, the mark scheme gives one mark for starting with a conversion for units or for working with company A. The second mark is for a complete process to find the time for A or B. The third mark is to find the times for A and B. And the final mark is for an answer in the range. Now, we, we often give answers in a range to allow for slight premature rounding early on. We don't want to get to a stage in an exam paper where a candidate gets penalised in three, four, five or more questions for, for early rounding. So we will accept answers in the range that is given in the mark scheme. So we'll go straight to look at some questions and some marking. When you look at the mark scheme in more detail, you'll see there are so many ways that you can get the first mark or indeed the subsequent marks, depending on which um, way you work through the question and whether you use gallons or litres. Um, so there's various ways. There's also the fact that we're given a time as one minute, 40 seconds. And it's very common to see this used as the decimal 1.4 rather than the correct 1.6 recurring. So the mark scheme does allow for the incorrect notation or incorrect value for time, and it will be penalised by the accuracy mark, loss of accuracy mark at the end. And that's exactly what happens in this first response. This first response is absolutely correct, apart from the use of 1.4 for 1 minute 40 seconds. So trying to convert time into decimal in that way is a very, very common error. Uh, if that 1.4 had been replaced by 1.6, the answer would be perfectly correct. But the mark scheme allows the award of all three process marks, but the loss of the accuracy mark for that early conversion error. In response B, there's a couple of ways you could award the first mark, and that's true in part uh, response A as well. So uh, converting, uh, doing 4.54 times 2.2 is one way of getting the mark. The other is for starting with company A, a and doing the 2,400 divided by 8. So either of those is correct and would get the first mark. We then go on and unfortunately the rest of the uh, responses isn't correct. The 300 divided by 1.66, the 1.66 is the correct decimal version of time to, two de to truncate it to two decimal places. But unfortunately it's a division rather than a, a multiplication. And there's nothing there that is worthy of awarding um, any subsequent marks. So it's just that one process mark. Another question on the foundation paper and the calculator paper. And the mark scheme here is really to demonstrate that marks can be awarded sometimes in any order. Here we've got a mark for the area of the triangle and then the area of the circle, the area of the sector and then the answer. Again, note the fact that the answer can be anything in the range 18.2 to 18.3. The give your answer correct to three significant figures in the question is guidance. Uh, there's no mark for doing that. Again, if there was a mark every time we asked for a specific accuracy, then it would um, it could lead to the loss of a number of marks for the same error. So we're looking for an answer in the range. So the first response, we've got the correct um, area of the sector comes first. So we'll look at that. So we've got the um, quarter pi r squared or 9 over 360 times pi r squared. So two marks for that. Uh, one mark for the area of the triangle, which we can see on the right hand side. And then the answer is correct. The 18.265 is a correct answer. So we can award four marks at that stage. And it doesn't matter how that goes on to be rounded, because that first answer is in the range given in the mark scheme, we can award the mark there. So four marks for this response. In part B, we do see 50.625, uh, sorry, 50.265, but that has clearly come from considering the perimeter rather than the area. 
So looking at a method as a whole, the candidates found the perimeter and then divided by four. So that is not the area. So no marks can be awarded for that. Lower down, we see 32. And in the mark scheme, we do often see numbers in brackets. And if there's a number in the bracket, then that can be used to imply a correct method. So here, the 32 by itself is enough to get the mark for the area of the triangle. But then, obviously, as we've already said, the area of the sector is incorrect. Moving on now to some higher questions and a quadratic equation. Uh, more than one way to solve a quadratic equation. The very most able candidates don't need to rearrange this to solve it. They can um, do it in their heads, as it were. So the first mark is for rearranging, which we would expect to see. But equally, it could be implied by uh, the uh, uh, factorising as shown in the additional guidance for those who know how to do it. So applying that to these three responses. The first one, we don't see any arrangement, so we can't award that first mark. And the answer for the factorising wasn't correct. It wasn't what's detailed in the additional guidance. So we can't award that first mark. But we can award the second mark, because on the mark scheme, the second mark was for um, starting to factorise, and that could be by x plus or minus 3, x plus or minus 8, or the other conditions seen on the mark scheme, one of which we'll see in a minute. But then A0, the answers are wrong. <clears throat> Part B, the uh, equation has been re rearranged correctly, so M1. The factorising isn't correct, but the candidate has realised that the two numbers have to multiply to give negative 24. And so we can award that second mark for that realisation, and that is detailed on the mark scheme, but then A0. Uh, part C, M1 for rearranging. M1 for the substitution into the quadratic formula. We can condone one error, and in the substitution, we can see 24 instead of negative 24 used. So we can condone that error and award the second mark, but obviously A0, they're not going to get the right answer from that. And finally, in part D, there was no requirement in the question to show working, so the correct answer for 8, negative 3, get full marks. It doesn't matter how they're put together. We, as long as the eight and the negative three are there, the words in between, whether it's or, or and, or a comma, or anything else is ignored. Uh, we just look at the figures. Question 10 on 3H calculator paper was set as a similar triangles um, question, but obviously you don't need to use similar triangles and scale factors. You can use trigonometry, um, Pythagoras, uh, we have to use Pythagoras, but uh, trigonometry can be used instead, and that was seen. Sometimes the mark schemes are written as two completely separate mark schemes, depending what methods used, if there are two completely different methods. But here it's written as one um, because it, it worked quite well that way. So for those candidates that use the scale factor or those that use um, trigonometry to find the angle and then work with the angle, um, both both different methods are uh, detailed in the scheme. The most common error on this question was actually to use the wrong scale factor, because once you've put the numbers onto the uh, diagram, the 6 and the 9 on side ADB um, led a number of candidates to think that the scale factor was 1.5 uh, rather than 2.5 because they look from BD to DA rather than BD to BA. So the use of a one and a half scale factor was a, a common error. For this um, particular response A, we do have a fully correct method, but the candidate has rounded too early. They've only given the, uh, the square root of 32 to, to one decimal place. So they've truncated very early there and the final answer isn't in the range given in the mark scheme. So when we follow the method through, it is actually fully correct, but uh, there's a loss of accuracy. So we get the three process marks, but not the accuracy mark. 
response B shows the incorrect uh, use of 1.5 as a scale factor. So the um, AC has been found to be 3, which is incorrect. Because it, the method to find the 3 was incorrect, we cannot then um, give a mark for Pythagoras' theorem being used because the 3 is from an incorrect process that needed to come from 2 times 2.5, not 1.5. The final method shows the correct use of trigonometry to first of all find the angle and then to use the angle to find the required side. But again, the accuracy has been lost. So an answer of 14 isn't in the range given on the mark scheme. Uh, so we've got P1, P1, P1 and A0. 11B on uh, 2H, and this is just looking at part B, we're asked to find the equation of a straight line, and we're given two points on the straight line, one of which is the y-intercept, so we can uh, use that. The first mark is either for a process to find the gradient of that line or for recognising that um, the equation is going to be of the form y equals mx plus 3. So you might see on the answer line y equals something times x plus 3, and that would be enough to get that first mark, as we'll see in a minute. <clears throat> so in the first response here, we've got the y-intercept 3 written down in the first line. That's not enough to get that, the mark. Uh, we need to see it being used in an equation, which we do on the answer line. So seeing y equals 2x plus 3 on the answer line is sufficient to gain that first mark. To get, the second, uh, to get the second mark, we'd have had to have seen the gradient being used to find the gradient of the perpendicular line, but there's no attempt to do that. All we see is m equals 2, which could come from a correct method to find the gradient of the given line, or it could, well, we don't know where it's come from, so we can't give any credit for that. Response B, the gradient of the initial line is not negative a half, so we can't award the first mark for that. But we can award the first mark for the fact we've got y equals 2x plus 3 on the answer line, so we're awarding it for the use of the y-intercept there. The second mark is being awarded for the gradient of the perpendicular. The mark scheme said we could take their gradient and divide it, uh, use the correct method, minus 1 over. So we can award that second mark there. The third response, we have got a correct method. In fact, we've got the correct method all the way down to find C until it's put on the answer line. So unfortunately, the value of C on the answer line has been written as negative 3 rather than positive 3, despite being found correctly. So uh, it's two marks for response C. D is fully correct. No working, no working was requested. So full marks. Question 14 on 1H is uh, an algebra question. And it's a question where the answer is given. So we do need to check working carefully here uh, to make sure that it really does come from correct working and not incorrect working. We've got uh, M1 for a start to finding uh, an expression for any rectangle. It doesn't have to be expanded. It could be. Uh, the second mark is for a complete expression for the correct area, for the total area of the shape. And then A1 if the algebra is correct. Okay, so in the first response, we can see that we've got one correct area for 4 times x plus 1. We've then got a complete expression for the whole area, and it's clear that they go on to be added. But unfortunately, the candidates made a mistake in the first line of 4x plus uh, 4. Again, we can ignore that until we get to the accuracy mark, because it's clear that they understand how to add the two, uh, that they've got to add the two expressions together. But when we look carefully at the working Although the answer is correct, seemingly, we can see that the 46 comes from 1 plus 42, so we can't award the accuracy mark, and obviously we would have seen that error in the first line. So M1, M1, A0. 
Part B, we've got one correct area for x plus 11 to x plus 6. The second area is not correct because it should be 4 times x plus 5. The candidate's working with the whole area and subtracting the missing bit or attempting to subtract the missing bit. So just M1 for one correct area. And then part C, we've got a complete expression. We've got missing brackets, but the second line makes it clear the candidate knows what they're doing. So we can condone the missing brackets because of the correct expansions there. And the answer is correct with supporting working. Unfortunately, if that first line had been present by itself without anything else, then we couldn't condone the error of the missing brackets because it is algebraically incorrect as it stands. But being superseded by the second line means that full marks can be awarded. In the final response D, we've got one correct area. We've got uh, 4x plus 4. But the second um, expression is incorrect, the 2x plus 6 and the x plus 11 is correct, but then they've been added instead of subtracting. So we've got an error at that stage, so the second mark can't be awarded. Again, we have seemingly a correct answer, which really doesn't follow from the line above, so A naught. But these type of questions must be checked through carefully. Going on to uh, another geometry question. Again, the question that asks for reasons. And in this case, when we look at the mark scheme, we can see that the reasons are, um, the marks for the reasons are given at the end, the communication marks. And there are two method marks for working your way through the problem. The accuracy is tied up. So to get C2, you need to get the accuracy correct for finding the angle is 25 and giving both reasons. If you don't get the answer right, or then you can get a mark for just one reason, or you might get the answer right and not give both reasons, but just one reason you can get C1. It's very important in these questions to look at the diagram because working is often done on the diagram. That's usually the, the most successful route, um, but obviously it can be detailed in working by using correct notation. The first response A, we've got a method to find angle BCD. We see 180 divided by four. The answer of 35 is, is wrong, but it's come from a correct method. So and the angles are then given as 145, 35. Obviously, that, they're not right, but they've um, been worked out. Uh, 35 has been used correctly to get the 145. We've then um, got a statement to find angle ADB, which is wrong. The candidates unfortunately changed their mind. We've got 180 minus 35 minus 20, which isn't correct. It shouldn't uh, be the 35 there. So M naught for the second mark. We can't. We have got two correct reasons, but we can only give C1 because in order to get C2, the answer has to be correct. So we can only award C1 here for the one of those reasons. Again, we do need to see uh, the words that are underlined in the question, uh, sorry, in the mark scheme, which we do here. Finally, in part, in response B, we've got um, a fully correct method. Now, there is a slight notation issue in that we've got ABD equals 25 instead of BDA, but the fact that the 25 is on the answer line as well is enough to make it clear that the, the, uh, the final answer is correct. So we can award the marks for that, even though there's a slight notation error in the question there in the response to the question. Absolutely no reasons are given. So although the answer is correct, we can still only award M1, M1 uh, and then C0 because there are no reasons given at all. Going on to this question, we've now um, got a cosine rule. And again, we've got a requirement to give the answer correct to three significant figures. But as I've said before, that isn't, uh, doesn't have to be the case. We just have to have an answer between 11.4 and 11.5 in this case. 
And the common error in the cosine rule, as we can see in the second response here, is to do things in the wrong order, basically. The first response we see on the answer line is 11 centimetres. Now, that's not in the range given in the mark scheme. But when we look at the working, we see the correct working. We also see the correct answer, 11.428, which is in the uh, range given in the mark scheme. So at that point, we give full marks and just ignore the rounding. And that's always the case in questions where a range is given. If we see the correct answer and then it's rounded incorrectly or over rounded, we award full marks at the point of seeing the correct answer. The second response is a, a typical response where the wrong order of operations is used. Um, usually, candidate works out 8 squared plus 11 squared minus 2 times 8 times 11, works out that and then multiplies by cost 72. So the first mark is for a start to the method. So we've got the correct substitution into the cosine rule. The second mark is for a correct order of operations. So there's no evidence of that here because we've got the 2.78. So we've got no evidence of the order of operations. Um, so we can't give the second mark. And obviously, the answer is incorrect. Right, that's the end of this marking training for this year. But there is previous training from November 2020 available on our website. So that training is very similar to this, but it does focus on the reason, interpret and communication questions, AO2 type questions, and also the problem solving questions, AO3. And indeed, the training today focused on many of the AO3 type questions. So thank you for listening, and I hope you found this training useful.